Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We come together again in the circle, connecting through space, coming together as one group, continuing our work with the Creative Lab, awakening the souls of our nations. I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 initiative, the Hikal Group and Klanshali Group. Happy Vaisak. Over to you, Uta. Welcome everyone to our nation's lab. It's our 33, 33rd session today. And we have dedicated it to a preparation for the Vesak to tighten or make more precise our various alignments. And for this, we have prepared a new slide. A dear co-worker has helped us with this. <clears throat> we have made this addition to our Pinnacles painting. It's a first sketch of our Council Chamber of Elders in Training. It's a first attempt to give an outer expression to our inner perception, to our building in subtle matter. Uh, of course, this is a challenge and an opportunity. It can be a great help for bundling our visualization together, making it stronger. But of course, also it is very limiting and uh, imprecise to try to depict with our means something that we envision and build on the subtle planes with subtle matter. And it can also open us to all kinds of glamour, of course. Um, so this is a this is a trial to introduce a new medium maybe into our work it could be fascinating to refine this picture together as we go um, each time adding something that we have understood about our common um, creation of the of the council chamber and um, using this tool or this 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 um, way of working with a picture to become more precise with our perception and also our building capacity in subtle matter. So let's see how it goes. Um, a diagram is something that is more of a mental approach and our meditative experience of our chamber is more an astral buddhic ex approach so let's today explore if this if these two approaches can can be combined can can complement each other um, yeah so it will be interesting after the meditation um to share our impressions so this picture shows our various alignments so we all know we started with uh, with the pinnacles with um this is a depiction of uh, assuming a position of being the conscious self for our nation lighting a flame on its pinnacle, so to speak. And the second step in this nation's lab work is to project a line 
upwards to where we meet together as representatives of our various nations and together as a, as a council on behalf of the human family as a whole. So we are tracing here future lines of connection, creating a seed, trying, playing with, um, with the seed for a future UN, tracing a geometrical structure and building into it um, appropriate qualities. And uh, of course, the more precise or the more refined uh, we can create this meeting space, which means, you know, through our alignment, the more precise this alignment is, the more we become receptive to the inflow from on high, which is here symbolized in the picture through the column of light from above. So here we have this um, this cooperation between us as the elders in training and our elders in the ashram. And so this combined light may flow into into this into our international group and through each of us into our respective nations. So let us use this opportunity of the approaching Vesak to precision these alignments, make them more distinct in our consciousness. And uh, we will do this today by two different meditations that we do. In the first one, we will focus on the council chamber itself preparing it for closer cooperation with our elders in the ashram. And in the second meditation, we will focus vertically on this line of connection with the ashram. Um, yeah, on discerning and developing this line of contact and closer cooperation with our elders. We do this, of course, as a service to our nations and to the family of nations, making ourselves receptive to a future vision. In a future UN, um, delegates will be conscious of these high moments and of astrological opportunities to take advantage of them together for the common work. So let us now prepare ourselves and our chamber for this added step that we can take now together. Let us withdraw our attention inwards to our place of perfect stillness. Breathing, breathing deeply, grounding in our body. and in the earth. Being calmly present as a soul in this incarnation.
And let us now touch base with our own nation, imagining ourselves standing on a pinnacle overlooking our nation. Sensing our co-workers, national co-workers with us on the pinnacle. And getting in touch with our nation, feeling our love for this nation. And feeling also our freedom from it. We stand at this midway point on the pinnacle between the national personality and its soul and taking on the task of being part of the conscious self of our nation the Ajna center of our nation. Sensing for a moment this responsibility, this function. And now, raising our vibration, widening our role into that of an elder for the family of nations as a whole. Making this shift consciously, taking a moment to calibrate our heart to the will to love no matter what. Emulating the Christ. And making also our mind as inclusive as we can now, aspiring to a planetary perspective. Stabilizing it. Standing in our intention to serve humanity to the best of our present capability. And letting ourselves now be drawn to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know very well. Entering into the quiet and clear and spacious chamber. The chamber is empty. It's only us, our group present here. Let us take a moment to observe this chamber, realizing what we have already built together.
we notice the geometrical harmony And we sense the atmosphere, the qualities that we have already woven into this space. Through our loving discernment and intent, we add clarity and strength to the chamber. We heighten the vibration of it. So let us now do this together, preparing the temple for the Vesak through loving discernment and intent. Taking another moment to just sit in this focused, ordered silence. Let us leave the high vibration now in place in the chamber while we quietly leave it and return to our personal grounding. Let's take another moment to just note down any impressions, if you would like.
Okay. So now let us share our impressions of the council chamber and also will be interesting to hear how it was for you that you have this, you saw this picture. Also, is it helpful or more hindering? Um, yeah. So please raise your hand and we will unmute you. It's really like a lab um, building together, experimenting and uh, sharing our findings, our impressions. Thank you, Uta. This is Andrea. It's a beautiful meditation, and I really like that new image. There's something about that space above that becomes a synthesizing space, a place of synthesis. And what I saw in it, which may or may not be relevant, was that it was a place where all seven ashrams come together and pour down into humanity. It also was a space where it recognized the seven continents of the world. It, it, it just took it higher. Thank you so much for adding it. It was good. Mm. Thanks, Andrea. Yes. There's so many things to take into account um, with uh, working with an image. So many new, new things and new questions coming up. Truly a creative endeavor. This is Margot from Canada. The transition from standing on the pinnacle and observing, observing the building and being in the building as an elder and a representative of Canada, the transition to being uh, an elder of, of world community was was smooth when the word geometry or geometric space was said something clicked i could actually hear a click inside my head and everything came into greater focus it was more precise and this uh, this space that is being created in the temple the sense is that it's it's registered deeply internally in the group um, I, I also really like the new image thank you mm. thank you margo Mm-hmm. 
Uh, hello, this is uh, Judy from uh, United States. Um, for me, this meditation blended with the meditation that I do every week. Uh, I'm in a group called the Economy of the One Life through the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And we gather every week in the United Nations Meditation Room. And in that room uh, are a number of higher beings uh, that gather with us and certainly the workers. And from that place uh, this past week, we stepped out and we were actually in the Waysack Valley. So it, it had me pondering on the idea of this room uh, which supports the one life uh, being in etheric matter. And when I look at this picture, the United Nations Meditation Room is under the General Assembly. And so when I see all of those pinnacles, they are all held in the room and above is the order that's going on in the world. And the problem is that there is not a synthesis at this time between that energies of humanity as the one life and the various uh, leaders that are leading the nations. And as I looked at this, I basically looked at a synthesis uh, between humanity and all of those leaders above. And there was a point in which it was a future picture. And the future picture was that those leaders uh, leading the nations will be uh, disciples and initiates that uh, are ready to hold that point. And what we're creating in some ways for me feels like a vehicle for which uh, that would happen. So this was a, a beautiful combination of the meditations uh, working together uh, to enhance the picture of where the future might bring us. Yeah, thank you, Judy, for bringing in the, the meditation room in the headquarters of the UN. Uh, yeah, I definitely see it also as as an etheric space, or you know, existing also in subtle matter in the inner planes and uh, working together to you know to keep in mind this this uh, physical place in new york um, this altar made of this uh, uh, huge slab of iron um, yeah all the symbology there and the, the 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 beings there that 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 are there stationed there and uh, so much is already in place there um to keep this in mind as we do our work here is uh, very important very very powerful yeah You know, Asa Jolie, um, in his um, psychosynthesis of the nations, uh, where he also mentions international psychosynthesis, he envisioned this that in the in in that assembly, general assembly uh, chamber in the UN, it, uh, there will be sitting disciples and initiated initi initiates it's a great vision to hold uh, yeah jill here when i go to this room on sundays and now i see it as a very light room silent and full of love and i think that all people that gather there will eventually go into telepathic rapport as they work 
um, and from that place uh, we can all work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. We are. Um, I also sense we are coming into a, um, a level or a, a state of ripeness together. This this uh, telepathic rapport is is becoming tangible and practical, like perceivable, and uh, we are able to to work with it. There are two impressions that come to me as I <clears throat> both as look at this image and uh, as we meditate together is that there is a uh, meditative technique that we've been using in our groups for uh, many years is that when we physically gather it in the same space we visualize the group center and when the time comes for sharing we don't address to each other on the personality level but we talk to each other through the group center we talk to to the group center and so this image has that idea for me it brings that same idea so this individual lights on the pinnacle they don't interact on the levels of those uh, personality lights but they relate to the level uh, of that lights in the circle above them to the soul level and so that's where the interactions real interactions can happen because on the level of personalities they can be uh, quarrels they can be you know, likes and dislikes but the true alignment happens where direct our attention there upward. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is uh, particularly comes from this meditation that's at this time of the Vesak, there's such a profound silence up there when we focus over there. And it's even like as if like what's any words we say in distracts us from that silence, from that powerful light that's actually coming there through that focus that we all hold above. And it's also in this image. Mm -hmm. so it's very helpful that as we hold our sharings is that recognize that we listen to that light and we communicate via that light with each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And listen. So, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Deborah. Thank you, Lucha. Yes, this is Deborah from the US. Um, it was interesting that the 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 council chamber that I I see set in in nature in a pine forest um, is mostly comprised of glass or crystal um, and is a, a round building uh, and i had the vague sense before today that it was possibly close to or up against a mountain but this time entering the room with the 
circle of 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 chairs where we gather um it became clear that the wall opposite the entry was indeed the bay not the base but um embedded into at a very higher elevation uh embedded into a sacred mountain as in the himalayas for example um mm -hmm. and that the rock wall of the mountain became very uh solid very tangible and and looking closer there were two great oak doors built into the mountain and i understood that when those doors opened there was a pathway into an interior uh, sacred cave that was then there that that beam of light that is in the uh, image uh, uh, shone through an opening at the top of the mountain into that interior cave center, which to me indicates the group making a successful movement from you know, the Ajna center into that light in the head, that heart center in the head that is stands directly beneath that downward shaft of ashramic light. Mm. And, yeah. and that, that was the really the totality. It had a, a very high frequency vibration uh but almost no human forms just the consciousness mm -hmm. yeah wow beautiful And something to ponder on. All right. In thinking of the high points, the heights, even the Himalayas come from the depths. In its geological that history, it, <clears throat> there are shells found high in the Himalayas. The great mountains stand because they know or if they did know, but there is a recognition, at least of, of many of us, that they include the depths and the heights. And in that inclusion is a oneness. And the great mountain of the Wissak is in far western Tibet. It stands alone in a way, and the major rivers from the depths commence at the area of Mount Kailash. These are major rivers of Asia, giving, feeding the thirst of billions of peoples. Mm. And yet, through it all, there is a oneness in the whole higher conception, far beyond my knowledge, of course, but it is present and in our meditation and this beautiful image symbolism 
that we're using today, that all holds the essence of unity, oneness, touched through and with an alignment with a greater purpose and a greater being, and still the unity of all. Mm -hmm. The message of Wasak has been in existence for way over 2,000 years. Sacred to all peoples. In a mountain. It's, it expands in its majesty our sense of time and space. Yeah, so it seems that uh, to work with an image is helpful for us. And uh, yeah, I would love to continue working with an image and letting the image develop as we um become more discerning of this space that we are building together of the qualities and perhaps of the shape too any more impressions before we move on Okay. Yeah, so within the greater, this expanded sense of time and space that we are now experiencing as we approach the Vesak. we are also becoming more and more aware of this ashramic landmark of the conclave, the ashramic conclave of 2025. So for us, as the new group of world servers and especially as the esoteric community, these are precious last months of this forerunner period precious for for releasing more intently now our old stuff all that is 
burdening us and making us crystallized and glamoured and and all these impediments um, to make a concerted effort to release this so that will be a, that we will be as ready as we can for the new possibilities higher possibilities that may be offered to us and asked of us very soon So let us take a moment together to reflect on our esoteric community, inviting into our awareness the many different groups and approaches and viewpoints that we have. And together with this, also the conflicts and the cleavages that still exist between us. Maybe, yeah, having been exacerbated um, in the last few years of tension, world tension. And of course, we also participate in this human phenomenon of different opinions and uh, the resulting clashes and tensions. We evolve as humans, as uh, the fourth kingdom, as uh, yeah, in this mode of evolution of harmony through conflict. So, let us inside renew our intention to overcome these cleavages by realizing that probably all of our different viewpoints are needed on our journey to expand our consciousness into a planetary perspective, into what DK calls a completed point of view. So let us see these different viewpoints not as a liability, and not only as an unfortunate challenge, but also as a necessity. Perhaps we can welcome them and not make such a big deal out of them, not to judge each other for entertaining them, but embracing these differences. And releasing the charge that we all hold, that many of us hold um, when we are challenged by different viewpoints. Let's make a concerted effort to, to move on a pace, really, to, to, and to put these cleavages and grievances that we have with different spiritual brothers and sisters. Let us just put them on the altar of Vesak. For transmutation so that we may stand united for the coming opportunity. Because as we know, only as a united world group can we fulfill our function and can we provide this needed unifying vision for our human family. At this Vesak, um, we will have a silent meditation for all groups, inviting all groups within the esoteric community at the exact time of the Vesak, either subjectively or on the platform of the University of the Seven Rays Conference. 
Um, it's this Friday at 5 p.m. GMT that we will meet for a silent meditation. Um, and the Zoom door will be closed at 5.15. So if you want to participate, make sure it's before 5.15. And the link, uh, Alexander, have you put it already in the chat or? Um, yeah, hope you can find it in the chat. Everybody invited. And also, if you have other commitments, let us let us keep let us at this moment link in with each other and affirm our unity. Here in the Nations Lab, we do this. We we meet as colleagues with the same intent. Now, with this picture, we have even more of a of a sense of this. Like Alexander said, uh, we are working through this higher level. We are working together and it doesn't matter what's going on in our own nations and between our nations. We just hold the inner unity in our council chamber. And um, yeah, as I said before, we will we need even these different viewpoints. We need to share the different viewpoints so they can merge into a shared inclusive planetary perspective. It's part of our work. So as a united world group, the more united we are, the moment we establish a basic harmony, um, a door opens, a possibility opens to closer cooperation with our elders. And they, of course, as we know, they are waiting for us for this. It's just for us to realize our possibilities what can be done, which huge step can be taken when we, yeah, when we take this, this next step, this offered opportunity. Because of course, hierarchy must work by necessity through us, through the instrument of the world group. So we make a contribution to this by building this council chamber together, this dedicated meeting place where we can engage in this cooperative planetary endeavor. So let us now convene again in the council chamber and opening ourselves for this closer cooperation. Humbly, of course, using this antechamber of Vesak to attune more directly to our elders to dare to do this because it's a necessity. Establishing striving to establish a fuller working relationship. Um, and after this meditation, we will not have another sharing. We will keep the high silence. So we will just keep the, um, the platform open for a few more minutes after we finish the meditation, so we can share any impressions, perhaps in writing in the chat box or also via email. Um, we are always very grateful for your feedbacks because we do this together. Um, 
Yeah, and let us hold our inner unity and the channel to on high open together throughout this Vesak period for all our relations. So with much gratitude for our work together, let us enter again into meditation. So let us withdraw the attention inwards again into our place of perfect stillness. Being enveloped in the approaching Vesak energies. Rededicating and recalibrating our heart and our mind and our intuitive faculty and our will, assuming this planetary function. Let us reconvene now in our council chamber. Taking our places in geometric order. Establishing again our telepathic rapport. Taking a moment to let it deepen and stabilize. And within this focused silence, we hold with intent our role as elders in training for our human family. And we now invoke the presence of our elders of those high beings who guide and support our nation's work. And daring now to attune to their vibration as precisely as we can, offering ourselves 
and opening ourselves for a more direct working relationship. We'll be taking a few minutes in silent receptivity for this communion, for this deeper attunement.
very gently, gradually, with reverence. Let us loosen the high contact. And let the chamber absorb this vibration. Let this vibration be built into our chamber. And we dedicate this relationship with our elders and the chamber and the accumulating vibration to the service for the family of nations. leaving the high vibration in place. For the continuation of the work, let us now quietly exit the chamber, returning to our personal field, to our physical surroundings, grounding, letting our light shine wherever we are and grounding it as a blessing into the earth. Oh. Oh. 